Hello and welcome back everyone to our Omega Ruby Randomizer run on Rocket Rabbit commentaries and in this episode we will be continuing on through Meteor Falls by surfing around it because Meteor Falls is in fact the largest dungeon in the Generation 3 remakes. Much larger even than Victory Road which is you know mostly as Cloud mentioned in our previous take a uh, one shot. That the point of Victory Road is not to b mire you down in confusion it's to batter you in battles oh someone needs to tell the uh, the guys behind the generation one victory road that because generation one was confusing uh victory road was confusing as fuck you needed flash you needed strength you needed you needed those two specifically and you also needed a team of relatively high level Pokemon to go through all the mandatory trainer fights right but that's also because generation one arguably was the most difficult generation depending on your knowledge of you know, maybe the the game's balance or imbalances. That the level re imbalances. Generation one is not balanced at fucking. Right, all. but if you did not accept these as truth, then you were probably going to have a harder time with it than the players who did realize the exploits in Generation one. Instead, what you were going to be yeah. up against is a very yeah, like you said, a very mazy and uh, demoralizing Victory Road sequence where you face wild Pokemon that are high level, high stat, Pokemon trainers that are high level, high stat. And a bunch of obstacles where that will cause you to forget where you are, how you got there, and how to proceed, and how to get out. Also, that the Elite Four in Generation One capped out at level 65. Although, although they did, honestly, the only really difficult member of the Elite Four in Generation One is Lance. And it's not, and it's not Lance's Dragonite uh, that are the big problem in Generation One. It's actually his. It's more or less his Aerodactyl. His Aerodactyl is uh, quite factually one of the hardest Pokemon in the entire Elite Four. Defense and attack power, and it's a flying type. No, no, no. Aerodactyl is absolute shit for defense. The the thing that Aerodactyl has going for it is it's got it's got stupidly high speed and physical attack power. In a generation where Hyper Beam is based on physical attack sure. power. <laughs> yeah. If if you're if you are not faster than Aerodactyl, you can expect you can expect to lose to Aerodactyl. Unless of course you cheat and bring in Jolteon. Right. Jolteon is the answer to all of Gen One uh, Gen One's problems. Speed and high special attack stat. Yep. Beautiful. So we learned. Is there a problem? Throw Jolteon at it. Jolteon fainted. Use Kadabra. There are no more problems left. But why not Alakazam? Because you're playing a single player game. You don't have access to Alakazam. So well, there. I'm glad that Kadabra would at least make a good standing. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, you want to break Gen 1? You can solo the entire, the entire game of Gen 1 with a Kadabra. In fact... If you know what you're doing uh, early uh, early enough on, uh, on, you can have the Abra that you capture uh, before Misty solo the entirety of Nugget, uh, the entirety of the route after Nugget Bridge, and get conf get confusion and then just use confusion against both of Misty's Pokemon and still beat her with it. Right, and then it gets stronger and bigger and it deals more damage and it takes on higher level Pokemon. And then after you beat Sabrina, you get Psychic. Actually, before you fight Sabrina, you can get Psychic because that's at Mr. Psychic's house. Oh. And Sabrina gives you Psy Wave, which is useless. Oh, right, right. I, I, always, I always made that misconception. But Mr. Right, and Mr. Psychic lives in Saffron City, but so you have to get the water bottles for the guards to Celadon City, which you have to access through the secret route through Vermilion City or whatever. Um, let me think. Uh, it's not technically Vermilion City. It's... <sighs> Shit. Where is that route? So, uh, well, Diglett Cave. Okay, Diglett Cave takes you back to. Diglett Cave connects you between uh, uh between Pewter and, and Vermilion. Um. So you go. You go right. No, you have to go through Rock Tunnel. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you yeah, gotta go you, through. Rock you go tunnel. from Cerulean's Rock Tunnel to Lavender Town, and from Lavender Town you go uh, west in order to get to Celeron City. <sighs> Uh, right. And then, it has a map. We just don't remember what it is. Well, that it's it's like 
there is a pet you know you could just draw a straight line between places but we're just going to make a bunch of circles we're going to take a detour here and kind of meander around the center and then eventually just eventually make our way finally to center through a convoluted route that does not necessarily make sense and because of arbitrary guards that are too darn thirsty to let you through it makes it that much more awkward Oh, you think the map, you think the pathing in Generation One is bad? I'm glad you never played Gen Four. Gen Four's pathing is shit, just absolute shit. You spend the entirety of the game going around uh, the spit the uh, Mount uh, Mount Spear or Mount Pillar like four fucking times. Yeah, that's that's would get old after a while. And the reason why you have to keep going around the damn thing is because you keep getting new HMs that allow you to climb it up climb up it uh, slowly like uh, specifically rock climb defog strength and I don't think you ever need waterfall to climb up uh, spear pillar but it's bad man Mount Coronet rather that's what it's called Mount Coronet a spear pillar is the temple on top of Mount Coronet that actually has a uh, uh, Palkia and Dialga at it. Well, even people who have completed Gen 4 and want to help players who want to get through the game quickly also will rep will deposit a multi-step guide, you know, steps 1 through 250, that will take you to the part from the beginning to end where you want to end up. It's not quite 250 steps, it's close to 104. All right, now we are about to go into our next exposition rant. Hi, Steven. Wise lady. The descendant of the ancient Draconoids. The Drake. Yep. The Drake. The, the Drake. The Draconians. <laughs> yes. Meteoroid. Lord Rayquaza. Yep. Lord Rayquaza, also known as, well, Rayquaza is officially a deity. Lord Rayquaza. Slap. You will bow before Lord Rayquaza's power, especially in competitive, where, where Mega Rayquaza was so broken that he invented his own goddamn tier. Hmm. I can explain away your faith in lore with science, but I'll still listen. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient that these exact concepts are being confirmed. Yep, and it's here where we get revealed that Zinnia is in fact the current lore keeper. So yes, Zinnia is in fact a draconid. She taught them the secrets. So, yep, Zinnia and time travel by extension have created this entire game. <laughs> yep. Damn it. History is doomed to repeat itself. Please don't let that be we true. We must restore balance to the Force. But Obi-Wan, balance would mean that there's only two Jedi and two Sith Lords left. Wait a minute. Equal light comes equal not light. Equal light begets equal darkness. You cannot use light to overpower darkness, for if you attempt to do that, then, then light expunges everything. Will they negate each other? No, they don't negate each other. They a, a light, light very specifically is always more powerful than darkness. Balance in the Force. There is no such thing as balance, Obi Wan. You lied to Luke. Get over it. Down the ladder we go. So that, so that was it. Did, did we, did we receive an item? Like all we did so far was just have narrative discussion. Yep, that was all we needed to come in here for. We need, uh, and you do have to do that in order for Zinni to show up at the next spot. Right. So, so, you know my secrets now. I see. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, I do kind of like that because, well, I mean, for God's sake, uh, in a game where most of the information is given to you by captive audience exposition, um, yeah. Now that we have that captive audience exposition, things are going to seem a little different from here on out. Only slightly, though. 
I probably should have just walked back in, into, uh, in, not Petalburg, but Rustboro. Yeah, that's where we're going, Rustboro. Okay, so this is effectively the end of Act 2 in this uh, DLC. Ah, uh, start of Act 2, rather. Because there's because there's still Team Magma's Rebellion that's happening, and we've only seen the the very first stages of that. Okay, we'll put Swoobat away because now we don't need a surfer. Hello, Evie. We're taking the star piece from you. Metapod. 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 That's a level 34 minute pod. Just checking to make sure none of our none of the additional Pokemon that we caught off screen have items. <laughs> they tend to do that, those little buggers then. Getting items and not sharing them. Mm. So are you ready for the Elite Four the Elite Four Gauntlet? The Elite Four Gauntlet? Yep. Nerd. You're getting in my way. Again. It's just a bunch of magma. But that's... No, but he's only got two Pokemon, though. That's not Elite Four Challenge. This is bullshit. But he's got... One, one of them's a Heliolisk, and Heliolisk is a cool Pokemon. Only Heliolisk because the randomizer hath decreed. Um, but he still only has one other Pokemon. <laughs> And he's level 48, which means he would absolutely get kicked uh, kicked in the face by Steven. Yeah, I mean, they can't make him as powerful as the Elite Four. Because then why the hell didn't these guys just run over the Elite Four and make all the money? Yeah, because they didn't have gym badges there. You got a solid point there. They didn't actually get the gym badges. Well, they don't want to do it the legitimate way. They want to take it by force. But the legitimate way is so much easier. But you see, when force recognizes another force that is ostensibly greater, then force does not meet force. Force goes away and goes elsewhere. Mm, you see, that's how it works in physics, not how it works in people. Uh, it's kind of... Uh, okay, okay. Well, wait, well, I mean, people... I mean... You could you could flip you could flip a coin on that exact decision and it would be equally valid. Uh, no, because you usually have to take into account uh, the the variables for individual people's and personalities and experiences. But as this particular grunt mentions, yes, this rebellion is being led by Courtney. Tat, we want to sing. We will be king. We will throw electrics at your trainer. We are men. We're men inside. Men in inside. <laughs> ah, primordial C. That's the uh, ability that disables fire attacks. Disables fire attacks. Ooh. Yep. See, that's worse than fire attacks not even doing damage. Ah, Calm Mind. Calm Mind is still one of the best setup moves that we have. It's right up there with Coil. I personally prefer Coil over Calm Mind, but, like, no one gets Coil naturally, so it's very difficult to use. I do agree that the Homeward Idol in Sekiro is a great thing that will at least give you a sense of calm for a moment while the game loads. Because if you concentrate on the Buddha, then you will be that much closer to your goal. I'm hu I'm hungry. <laughs> These guys have very petty reasons to be standing in line waiting to fight you. <laughs> yes. Yan Mega. Ah, the mega form of Yanma. No, it's just the normal evolved form of Yanma. Yan Mega. Well, they, okay, that 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 Mega at the end is very misleading. Yes. Like, for God's sake, I like, mean, I'm trying to learn the new concepts, but you're telling me that it does not apply to a Pokemon that has Mega in the part of the name. This is true. Mostly because Mega Evolution doesn't actually change the Jesus species. Christ. It, uh, it changes their appearance and gives them better base stats, but it doesn't. Act, but it's not actually a new species of Pokemon. The Pokedex counts it as a new species of Pokemon for some reason, but it's not a new species of Pokemon. 
Say strength. This helicopter, this army helicopter looking fucking thing. Why? He's got sick. Is it so powerful? Ah, uh, because Yon Mega is actually a pretty decent special attacker. Clearly, yes. And Vile Bloom. Oh, he's, I forgot how cute she was. Well, this particular Vile Bloom is also said there. Houses. Oh, some people they always refer to, to they always refer to cats as female, and they always refer to dogs as males. Yeah, I admittedly am somewhat guilty of that. Because. All right, and in the next part, we will actually converse with Steven some more once we actually enter. Uh, once we actually enter Devon Well, week. yeah, but we got one more trainer to go. Yeah, but you know the part's over. All so. right, and in the next part, we will take on the rest of the Deplete Four.